First of all, I want to really thank the chairman um, as well as the staff, both on the Republican and the Democratic side and our bipartisan staff for the process to date. Uh, as the chairman noted, uh, we produced a very strong bipartisan bill out of committee. It passed by a vote of 57 to 1 and addressed a number of key concerns uh, to our national security. And, and a lot of work went into that. I always lose track of the exact numbers, uh, but well north of a thousand amendments were considered in committee and in the Rules Committee. Uh, the staff assisted through all of those and really helped produce that product. That is not an easy job. Uh, we are blessed on both sides of the aisle, uh, both on the Armed Services Committee and on the Rules Committee with an outstanding staff, and I want to really thank them for their work in producing this product. And the number one highlight of the product is what the chairman mentioned, is the focus on quality of life for our service members and their families. We uh, impaneled a group, a task force, to examine quality of life issues, led by Don Bacon on the Republican side, Chrissy Houlihan on our side. And they really did a remarkable job of doing outreach to service members, their families, veterans, and listening to them about what do you need? What is most important to make sure that you have everything you need uh, to take care of your family? And certainly one of the biggest issues was pay for junior enlisted. Uh, we upped that pay by 19.5%. Uh, which is a pretty dramatic number, but it reflects the need, the need that those service members face in the current environment. We also focus on child care, which is a crucial need, building more child care centers and eliminating the backlog of people waiting to get access to child care. Because we all know that what makes our military the best in the world is not any of the equipment, it's the people who serve. We need to take care of the people who serve and we need to take care of their families as well. That is the crucial part of the military. That's what this bill does better than any bill that we've ever done before in this committee, and one of the many reasons why this bill is so important. It is also crucial, as the chairman pointed out, to modernize and update our military. We are in a rapidly changing environment. We have seen that in the war in Ukraine. We saw that in the war in Azerbaijan and Armenia. Drones, counter drone, the ability to protect your information systems and make vulnerable the information systems of your adversaries are now absolutely crucial to fighting. We have to be able to upgrade that. I really want to compliment the chairman. We've worked in a bipartisan way to make sure that we can upgrade our technology more quickly, to work with those companies who are developing the most innovative technologies so that we can field them quickly, get our warfighters what they need in a timely manner. And then there is the matter of production. Uh, we have seen this in the war in Ukraine. We and our allies need to be able to produce more of the critical ammunition and weapon systems that we need to fight. And we are making progress. Um, I think that the Biden administration, and particularly under Secretary Austin, the coalition that was pulled together in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine is remarkable. North of 50 countries are now working together to help defend Ukraine, but also crucially to build up the partnerships and alliances and to make sure we have enough weapons to be an adequate deterrent to our adversaries. That process is going well. More needs to be done. This bill helps move us forward in that direction. This bill also focuses on oversight, as the chairman mentioned. We want to free up the military to buy the systems they need by making sure that we don't continue to spend money on systems that they don't need and that we exercise proper oversight. I want to particularly highlight the F-35 program. It has been a vexing and difficult program that has been over budget and underperforming for far too long. In this year's bill, we pare back on the number of F-35s purchased and put that money instead into making sure that we can get the F-35 that we're paying for, that they can reach the block four uh, that has been so elusive so, so many years. That is the crucial part of the job we do. So I think we've put together an excellent product. I am deeply concerned about the amendment process that will play out over the course of the next couple of days, uh, but we'll see how that plays out. The one point I do want to make on this, an area of contention has always been diversity. Um, the other side has been critical of what the Department of Defense has done to try to recruit the most diverse people possible. I will say much more on this throughout the amendment process. But look, we need to be able to access all the talent in this country, um, not just white men, okay? We need to recruit women. We need to recruit from communities of color. We need to recruit from the LGBT community. That is crucial to making sure we have the talent we need. 
I hope that this bill doesn't undercut those efforts as we go forward. As passed out of committee, as it stands right now, this is an outstanding piece of legislation, and I strongly urge everybody to support it. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman